coming from the United States. We are seeking to salvage the nuclear deal that is on the brink of collapse. U.S. President Joe Biden's administration has now offered talks with Iran. The United States has said that it is ready to talk to Iran about both nations returning to the deal, which, remember, was signed in 2015 to prevent Tehran from acquiring nuclear weapons. Now, the proposal comes three days before Iran's deadline to restrict some access to United Nations nuclear inspectors without an end, without an end to Donald Trump's sanctions. Now, the U.S. Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, has reiterated that the United States will return to the accord formerly known as the JCPOA, or the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, if Iran were to return to full compliance with the deal. The State Department spokesperson, Ned Price, said, and I quote him here, the United States will accept an invitation from the European Union High Representative to attend a meeting of the P5 plus one and Iran to discuss a diplomatic way forward on Iran's nuclear program. Uh, and the path for diplomacy uh, remains open. Uh, and I would say that as, as we and our partners uh, have underscored, uh, Iran should reverse these steps and refrain from taking others uh, that would impact um, the IAEA assurances on which not only the United States, uh, not only our allies and partners uh, in the region, uh, but the entire world uh, relies. And we want to go beyond uh, the 2015 deal, uh, lengthen and strengthen uh, it and uh, build on it with follow on uh, arrangements to address other areas of uh, concern when it comes to our relationship with Iran. Now just hours after Anthony Blinken's video conference with his French, British and German counterparts, the European Union's political director, Enrique Mora, has proposed an informal meeting involving Iran. Now Washington has responded positively to the European Union's invitation for talks among Iran and the six major world powers, who, remember, had negotiated the original agreement that was Britain, China, France, Germany, Russia and the United States. London, Paris and Berlin have welcomed Biden's intention to return to diplomacy with Iran. Now, the European Council President Charles Michel has said that he had spoken with the Iranian President Hassan Rouhani and that EU supports the full implementation of the deal. Now, Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif, however, has fired back saying that instead of sophistry and putting the onus on Iran, the EU must abide by its own commitments and demand for an end to Donald Trump's legacy of economic terrorism against Iran. Now, it remains to be seen if Iran will also be willing to sit down with the United States. It has set down a condition that the sanctions that were imposed by Donald Trump as a part of his policy of maximum pressure need to go. It is only then that Iran will consider returning to talks on this deal. Now, in addition to signaling a willingness to talk with Iran, Biden's administration has also reversed the widely discredited claim by Donald Trump that the United Nations had imposed new nuclear sanctions on Iran. In a letter, the acting U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, Richard Mills, has said that the sanctions said to be reinstated in August remain terminated. Stringent restrictions on domestic travel of Iranian diplomats posted to the United Nations have also been eased. And my colleague Jagrati Dave is still with us on this story. Jagrati, this, this is an interesting bit of an overture that has come in from the United States where Anthony Blinken has said that the United States is willing to talk. But as far as the Iranians are concerned, they've said that the tactic that was employed by Donald Trump of maximum pressure and imposing crippling sanctions. These crippling financial sanctions will have to go before Iran can return to the negotiating table. Do you see this proposal by the United States moving forward? Well, I think that uh, relations between the United States and Iran have uh, been steadily deteriorating. And we saw that um, in over the last few years. And uh, Donald Trump at his administration's maximum pressure campaign um, really uh, added to uh, those pressures that kind of back and forth where there was no budging on either side. Joe Biden's move here 
signals a change in direction, not just a change from that maximum pressure uh, uh, rhetoric and maximum pressure stance towards Iran, but also a change uh, from the isolationist policies of Donald Trump to a more multilateralism um, that uh, his many of his administration have talked about. So it's bringing the United States more back in line with its European allies. Now, the question does remain, of course, as you mentioned, whether Iran is going to agree to this, which side is going to move first. The US has said that um, it will uh, only lift those sanctions imposed by Donald Trump if Iran returns to the limits on its nuclear production, as outlined in the 2015 Iran nuclear deal. Um, and there are also some skeptics here, because there are some people who think that Iran isn't going to come and meet uh, the United States in the middle. There are some who think that actually the 2015 deal was so flawed that the United States should not pursue a path that returns to that. They should try and pursue a, a different kind of deal, one that um, doesn't give so much latitude as they see it to Iran as the 2015 nuclear deal did. This is according to the critics of that deal. There are those who think, you know, that the U.S. should continue to be more hawkish uh, towards Iran. So I think this is a first step towards a signal that of, of something uh, of possible change. But there's no guarantee that uh, the relations between the U.S. and Iran are likely to thaw uh, and negotiations are expected to be quite long and protracted. So it's a wait and watch uh, situation as it stands right now. Absolutely, indeed. We'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much, indeed, Jagrati, the way for joining us and getting us all those updates there. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.